from the Redneck Garage. Well, this is the second video of two of our battery series. If you didn't catch the first one, here's the link to the first video, which leads up to the exciting portion that we're going to do today. We're going to go buy a new battery, and I searched all over, got on the internet, and actually was surprised that I found a huge difference in the price of the batteries of one supplier. So let's take a look at where I got a battery for about the half the price of AutoZone, O'Reilly's, other auto parts stores, and I wanted to go through uh, some really kind of interesting trivia and facts about batteries through the years that I never knew myself that I actually researched for you, the Redneck Garage subscriber. So let's get going. All right, so I've done some price checking in town. I checked O'Reilly's and AutoZone, and most of those are around $99 was the cheapest to $115, but Walmart says they got a battery for $48 that should work. Post configuration, everything's the same. So we're going to go see if they have it. They're saying they got four in stock, and that's the last place. I hate shopping at Walmart for anything automotive because they're goofuses. But if they got a $48 battery, I'll drive over there and see if they got it because I'm selling this thing. <laughs> we'll see what they got. All right, we made it to the Walmart. It's the Walmart, not Walmart. And uh, if there's one place you don't want to be during the heavy shopping season, would be here because all the rednecks are out. So let's go into the auto center. You could call this an auto center. I'd call it just a joke is what I'd call it because if you bring your car here to get an oil change, you'll be here for probably four or five hours while they goose in the back there just kind of slack around. But we're going to go in because... I'm willing to put up with this for $48. Alright, here's my $49.95 battery. And I was surprised they had every case size in the $49.95. So if you're looking for a battery, man, you ought, to, you ought to check out Walmart. I'm not a big fan of Walmart, but these batteries for $49. Holy crap. It's a Johnson Controls battery, so it's not bad. Uh, I think it's got a one-year warranty, but since I'm selling the van, this is perfect. Now, we're going to hook it up to the charger and see what it says then, make sure that it's completely charged up, and uh, you'll see the difference between this battery hooked up and the other one, because this one, I guarantee you, is not shorted out. Battery voltage is 12.5, and I'm going to go ahead and hit charge, and it will automatically start to charge depending on the level of the battery and we're charging at 3.1 amps which means the battery's almost charged but probably not completely so I'll leave it on here for a little bit on the automatic uh, Black & Decker charger and once it's full we'll stick it back in okay so now we're going to do Redneck Garage Batteries 101 everything you wanted to know about batteries but we're afraid to ask <laughs> Truthfully, batteries have not changed that much. From the very beginning, from the first batteries ever made to today, it's still just two lead plates with uh, sulfuric acid in between that causes an electric charge. So you've got a rolling science experiment in your car when you're going down the road. Now the first cars, basically everything was hand cranked. And the hand cranking was really awful because what would happen is sometimes the car would backfire or it would kick back. You could break fingers, you could break your wrist, it could fly off, hit you in the head. There was actually people killed trying to start their car because it was such a terrible system. The trivia on that, interestingly enough, was when you hear somebody say, he's cranky, that all goes back to starting a car with a crank. How pissed off people got trying to start their car, it became a connotation to say, he's in a bad mood because he's cranky. <laughs> I never knew that. So obviously starting it with a crank really was really kind of crappy. So the first company that came out with a battery and electric starter system was Cadillac in 1912 on their touring editions. That was the first car with a battery and electric start. That was before everything else electric became common. Not until 1921 did Henry Ford offer an electric starter option on his Model T's. So here we go forward. The 6 volt battery was pretty much the common battery used up until the early 50s. Engines were getting bigger, cars were getting bigger, it was harder to turn them over. So in 1953, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac came out with a 12 volt system in order to make a more powerful starter to have more juice for all the options they were starting to add. And slowly that was phased into vehicles to, from a 6 volt to a 12 volt. So the 12 volt battery was pretty much the gold standard until the late 70s. The original batteries made had antimony in them. And antimony was a mineral that was added to the lead that made it much more durable, stable, but it also caused a lot of gas release as the battery charged. They decided that they could make a maintenance-free battery. 
To make a maintenance free battery, they really made the battery more crappy. <laughs> they took the antimony out and they replaced it with calcium, which was good in a way because what happened was it didn't release as much gas as it charged with the calcium. However, it made the plates more fragile and it caused problems with sulfation. The electrodes become coated with a hard layer of lead sulfate in it which weakens the battery. Now the good thing about the maintenance free batteries is that they released a lot less gas and it didn't lose any water so you didn't have to add any more to it but the weakness of the batteries is they didn't like deep discharges and when the battery was completely drained by like leaving the lights on and if you've done this for a few few times and you had to replace a battery you know what I'm talking about this coats the lead plate electrodes with sulfate deposits and it reduces the battery's lifespan by a third or more. So the maintenance free batteries, while they were better as far as not having to do anything to them, they were much more disposable because if you did anything to them, the plates weren't as durable and if you left your lights on and it went completely dead, eventually it would just kill the battery where the older ones you could add more water and acid to and you can revive them. So, so there's very little chance of reviving one of these new batteries because of the damage done when they go completely dead. So that's pretty much the battery that we have today. Let's talk about care and use. The number one damage to batteries is high heat. It causes damage to the plates, eventually can cause rupturing of the, the uh, case itself and it's bad. Heat is bad. Also cold on a dead battery is bad because all the acid is within the plates and not in the water, the water can actually freeze. So those two things, if you keep it charged up when it's super cold and you don't let it get too hot, the battery is going to last longer. Also, if you run your battery completely down, slow charge it because that will do less damage to the plates. However, the new batteries, the maintenance free ones, if you run them down completely, they're not made for that and it's going to it's going to crap the battery out now you've heard of batteries exploding. What basically happens there is some kind of damage to the plates, whether it's uh, caused by high heat, it can be from physical damage, but what happens is the plates start to short out and it causes what's called thermal runaway. When thermal runaway happens, the battery starts to heat up to the point that it can either explode, blow the tops off, uh, it's really, really bad. And one of the main causes of batteries exploding all the way back from 1910 is improper hooking up of battery cables which causes a direct short, positive to negative, negative to positive, and it causes the, bat the plates in the battery just to get so hot that they start to melt and then the battery eventually, that all that gas and stuff that's building up inside, you've created a bomb and the stinging thing blows up. It's happened all the time since the beginning of time and that's really the worst thing you can do is hook up jumper cables backwards. People that don't know what they're doing, quit doing that! Or figure out how to do it yourself. Lastly, what I would say about batteries, right? Batteries are the number one recycled material in the world. And I think there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, they, they charge you a pretty good core charge to get it back. Number two, people really know that lead is bad and they don't want it in the environment so they have like this guilt complex of turning them back in. Almost 90% of all batteries are recycled batteries that have been taken in, ground up, reformatted and put back together, making new plates and that's where we get our batteries from. So there you go. Those are some fact figures, history about the battery. It's not that much difference from way back when, except they're worse. <laughs> Alright, so is your head swimming yet with all that information and knowledge? <laughs> I've got my new Walmart battery, which was 48 bucks. I've got it charged up. It's 100% charged. Now we can put it in the van and see what we can do with that stinking thing to get it washed and put up. But I hope you know a little bit more about batteries how they came to be, what not to do to them, and if you let it freeze, you're going to buy a new one. Anyway, we're going to stick this in the van, see if it starts. That's going to be a video coming up. I'm David from the Redneck Garage. Key! Turn the wrenches.